Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Stay right there. Hallelujah, Lord. We glorify you today. Hallelujah. Glory, God. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Hallelujah. There's nobody like him. Nobody like him. Hallelujah. We can search all over. We can search high and low. But there is nobody like our God. Hallelujah. He sees everything. He has all power and authority. And the thing I love the most about him is that he loves me more than anybody else ever will. There is nobody like him. Hallelujah. He sees on the deep, down on the inside of me. He sees my struggles. He sees the things that I battle with. He sees my challenges. But notwithstanding that, he loves me. He's cared about the things that I care about. He hears me in the deep and dark hours of the night when I'm praying. When nobody else understands, glory to God, he's here for me, and I thank him. Glory, if I had 10,000 tongues to praise him this morning, it wouldn't be enough for the things that he has already done in my life. Glory to God. When we look back over our lives, and many of you can testify to it, you should have been dead and gone. Many of you should have had wrecked relationships. You should have lost jobs. You should have lost your mind a long time ago. But for God on your side, and it's not based upon any greatness on the inside of you. It's been based purely upon his love and his mercy for mankind. So tomorrow, this morning, I give him glory. I give him honor. I give him praise for being both Lord and Savior in my life. Hallelujah. I love him today more than I did the first day I gave my life to him. I appreciate him more. I thank him more today. I recognize the things that he has told me to stay away from was not for him. It was for me. And I can now recognize the things he pulled me out of was for my benefit, for my strength. It was for my sanity. He pulled me out of relationships. Hallelujah. And I thank him this morning. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Man, I could just weep before him some days. Hallelujah, for I know what he's done in my life. Some days I can just find myself just lost and crying to him. Hallelujah, not cries of sorrow. I remember once crying, my mother was patting me on my back. And I say, Mother, I'm not crying tears of sorrow. These are tears of joy and happiness and peace that I found in Jesus Christ. So don't feel sorry for me this morning when you see me crying. Hallelujah, I'm crying because I have found something the world could not give to me. Something I looked all over for. I tried to find it in women and drinking and smoking and carousing and relationships. But I found it in the one who had been there all the time with his hand stretched out. Saying, son, here I am. All he wanted me to do was surrender my heart to him. And what I found in him this morning, money came by. Alcohol can't give me. My wife and my children cannot give me. And billions of dollars couldn't give it to me. I found a peace this morning that passed it all understanding. And I thank him this morning. Glory to God. Come on, bow your heads down with me this morning. I thank him today. Come on and bow your heads with me this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we worship you this morning. We glorify your name, Lord. We recognize, God, you are a good father. Father, you have been better to us than we could have ever possibly deserved. And today, this morning, in this service, already in this praise and worship, we open up our hearts and our minds. Father, we surrender to you. We surrender to your will, for we know your will is best. We surrender to your ways, for we know your ways bring us to peace and joy. Oh, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we bind every distraction off the minds of your people right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we bind every distraction from this morning and things that we may be thinking about afterwards. We open up our hearts and minds that we may receive of your word this morning. And plant your seed in our hearts and our minds that we may grow closer to you uh, following this service than we were before we came in. And God, we're going to be careful to give you all the glory. 
the honor and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. Thank you, Lord. I tell you what, can't say I got everything that I desire out of life. Can't, can't say I have everything that I want. But this morning, I find no fault in God. Hallelujah. I find no fault in him because the things that he's given me, come on, praise him with me this morning. We can find ourselves sometimes when the world ain't treating us the way that we want to be treated. We can find ourselves just filled with complaints. We can find ourselves filled with bitterness. We can find ourselves walking around angry. But I can tell you this, God is a good God. And whatever he's withholding from me, I say ain't good for me in the first place. So, Father, do with me what you will on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So I just have a, a word on my heart this morning. And it's about your season for preparation. About your season for preparation. And I was, message I was planning to minister on um, for our four-year anniversary, and I wasn't here on that day, and it's been resonating in my spirit for quite a period of time. And uh, been praying, and, and uh, sure enough, this is what's on my heart to give you this morning. And before I get ready to get started, I know uh, we are living in uh, challenging times, and, and this country uh, is in perhaps uh, some of the most divisive times of my lifetime. I was born in 1969. I missed kind of the Vietnam War era and all the challenges going on with that, and certainly wasn't as far back as the Civil War times, where I know it was a divisive period in this country. But I can't imagine a time where we have been as divisive as we are right now. And we know we got uh, Roe v. Wade was overturned this past uh, week, and uh, as a Christian church, we believe in the sanctity of life. We believe the sanctity of life from the wound to the grave. We believe in it. Notwithstanding that, we want to be sensitive to other people who have different views. We want to pray for them, but we're not out to fight and, and argue and debate with people. Some people, you're never going to change their minds. But we always call to peace, and we always, as Christians, call to love. And we should always look to feel, be filled with love, filled with peace, even with our enemies. Amen? Amen. And as they, they've overturned it, and, 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 and now they ought to be pushing the government to say, we believe in the sanctity from the wound to the grave. And that means that we need some different policies in this country to make sure we're taking care of children once they're here. And making sure they're doing the part and making sure kids are educated. And I don't, this is not my message today, but I think it's important for us to say it as a Christian church. Amen. We, we believe in, in that, and we, we believe in saving lives. We don't believe in... In, in killing lives, and we believe we ought to be doing all things to save all lives, and that means sometimes putting some reasonable gun control uh, in place. Amen. Amen. So I'm saying it this morning, and that wasn't part of my message, but it's on my heart to say it anyway. Let, let's show we believe in it in everything that we do, and not just in some phases. We don't pick and choose the things we call sin in this country. Amen. We believe sin is sin no matter what it is. So the drunkard and the fornicator, the man that's sleeping with, somebody ought not be sleeping with, we believe in it all is wrong in our sight of God, and we need to be doing something about all of it. Y'all all right this morning? So I didn't, didn't mean to go there. Sometimes it's good to say it, let you know exactly what we believe. But we, this is a divisive time that we're living in, and, uh, and, and we know that uh, 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 Christianity, Christians, the Christian church, is under attack. And we see even as recently, I think it's maybe in a week or so ago, somebody go into a church and, and open fire. And uh, while we don't ever expect anything like that to happen here, I just want the church to know that we are always preparing and we're preparing for it. And uh, we met yesterday with uh, some officers uh, here at the church. And we had uh, one of the officers brought three of his friends and we talked about a security plan here for the church. I'm just sharing it with you to say these things are on our minds. Right? We, we don't ever expect it. We don't believe it's going to happen here. But but the Bible tells us that we ought to be uh, harmless as doves but wise as serpents. So we want to exercise a little wisdom as we prepare. And we just wanted you to know this morning that's something that's on our hearts and that we are thinking about it. And that uh, we met yesterday and we'll likely be having another meeting uh, sometime uh, in, uh, in July. Uh, so anyway, my message this morning 
is about your season for preparation. And uh, I know a lot of people here have big dreams. You have big desires, things that you want to do, and you want to do great things. Some of you want to go to school, be doctors, lawyers. Some of you want to open your own business. And, and some people want to uh, uh, be uh, uh, used by God in, in, in ministry. You want to be evangelists and teachers and pastors. And, and, and some of you want to be uh, retired someday. So some of you working right now, and you say, one day, God, I want to get off this job, and I want to just kind of retire. I want to I wa- I be able to see the benefits of all my labor. Okay. Oftentimes, what holds people back from being able to be successful in accomplishing their dreams and their goals is not oftentimes of lack of capability, meaning they have what's on the inside of them to be able to do what they desire to do. But what often holds people back is a lack of preparation. You, you, you have what it takes on the inside of you to accomplish the goal, but what you lack is preparation, the ability to, to look forward and get yourself ready for what's ahead. And, and oftentimes, it's not lack of intellect, okay? I say people are just a, of average, and most people of average intelligence, okay? Most people are. Some a little bit higher, some a bit more, but we're all right there in the middle. So, so it's not lack of intelligence, and I believe a lot of people are hardworking. You're putting forth the effort. Uh, to, to accomplish whatever your dreams or goals are, your desires. But oftentimes what holds you back is oftentimes a lack of preparation. You have failed to properly prepare yourself during your season of preparation. And, and there is a time, there's a time for preparation. And, and, uh, and this applies to every aspect of your life. It, it applies both naturally and it applies spiritually. Okay, now, now this message is for everybody, the saint and the sinner. We're going to talk about the saints and the sinners a little bit. But this message is for everybody. So everybody's attention, if you've got goals and you're not properly preparing to accomplish those goals, you're setting yourself up for failure. Amen? Amen. Now, now, if you have goals, you have a season to prepare for those goals. It's always a season of preparation. And, and Brother Wayne ministered a message. I'll, I'll just refer back to it talking about embracing your season, okay? And, and, and sometimes that's a season of preparation. And we'll start in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. He said, to everything, in verse number 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. He said, there's a time to be born, there's a time to die. He said, there's a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Okay, now this time to plant is equivalent to a time of preparation. And what you are planting in the season of preparation, what you're planting is the seed that is intended to bring the harvest of your goal at some expected point of time in the future. The problem is oftentimes we fail either to plant anything or what we're planting is not the seed that's going to bring forth the harvest that we're looking for in the future. So God wants to share with you this morning that you have to do both. You have to plant, prepare, plant the, a, a seed, but it also has to be the right seed to bring the harvest that you're looking for in the future. Amen? Amen. Now, now, we start off with an understanding, okay, that God wants to bless you. God wants to bless all of us, all of his children. And, and oftentimes, if you're like me, when I first came to God, you can come to God as either judge or father. And, and if you hadn't submitted, surrendered your life to God and said, God, I, I'm surrendering to you as both uh, Savior, we want Savior, but also submitting to you as Lord, meaning I want God to be the Lord, the controller, the ruler of my life. Now, now if you haven't submitted to him as both Lord and Savior, then God is judged to you. You're just waiting for judgment day to happen. But if you have surrendered to him both as Lord and Savior, you need to understand that God is no longer just judge. He will be a judge, but he's coming to him now as a father. Okay, and as a father, God then wants to bless you, just like you want to bless your own children. He wants to provide for you. He wants to take care of you. He wants your dreams to come to pass in your life. Now, now the Bible tells me God as a father, and last week was Father's Day. So this message is good coming on the heels of that. It, it tells me, the Bible tells me that God will withhold no good thing from them that walk upright. So, so God's not withholding any good thing from his children. He said, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you what? The desires of your heart. So, so it's God's desire as your father to bless you. 
to give you the dreams and desires of your heart when you're delighting yourself in living according to his word. You are his children. The, the righteous are the children of God. So if you're delighting yourself in God, you need to know that God wants to bless you. He wants to move for you. Now, now on the flip side of that, the Bible declares that, uh, that God maketh rich, but he added no sorrow to it. Now, now those two have to balance together. Right, he, he, he make it rich and added no sorrow to it. And so, so God is a good father that wants to bless you, but he's not going to bless you with something that you are not prepared to handle. Right. All right, so your desire is for something big and great, but you start asking yourself, am I prepared for the big and the great? So God is a good father. He's not going to give you something that you're not capable of managing and, and handling appropriately. So, so I got children of my own, and when they were five or six years old, if I went and gave them a million dollars, what do you think they're going to do with that million dollars? Okay, they're going to buy Tunker toys, and they're going to buy video games, and they're going to buy candy, and, and, and before you know it, they just done blew the whole thing. They weren't prepared for a million dollars. Okay, now as God is, is, is ministering this message to you this morning, and to all of us, to me as well, it ministers to my soul. Uh, God is telling us that as we are asking him for certain things, there are certain things that he's just not going to give us because we're just not prepared for at the moment. All right, he, he said he will withhold no good thing from them that walk upright. So, so if I'm praying for certain things, I have to start saying, God, am I prepared for the thing that I'm praying for? Okay, M many of us want better jobs, and we say, God, I want to be the supervisor on my job, and, and I'm, I'm ready to, to take on this next level. And God is saying, if, if you hadn't been able to, to correct and manage your own affairs at your house, if you can't manage relationships with your friends all the time, he's not ready to put you in a position of being a supervisor on your job, okay? If you say to yourself, oh, God, I'm ready for my, my husband, I'm a wife. I, I'm ready to get married tomorrow. But, but if you are not prepared as a woman ready to submit to authority, God is saying that, no, you're not prepared for a husband or wife right now. If you're saying that, God, I'm ready for my wife, and you are just self-centered, all you think about is yourself. And the Bible going to tell us as husbands, we got to love our wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So if I say I want to get married and I'm not prepared and ready to give up my will or my desires for the sake of my family, God's telling me I'm not prepared for a wife. Now, the good thing about God, the good thing about God, he's a good father because he'll give us some things that we say we want. But if we get it, all we're going to do is make a mess of what he gives us. Okay, so he's a good father. He's not going to give us things in our lives that we are not prepared for. Amen? I want a million dollars, but if all you're going to do is take the million dollars and spend it on yourself, all it's going to do is lift you up in pride. God said, you're not ready for the million dollars. He said, learn how to deal with the hundred dollars first. Can, can you give me 10% of that before I give you the million? All right, the, the Bible says, he that is faithful over the, uh, the least shall be faithful over much. So he said he's already seeing where you are, and we can try to fool people, but we can't fool God. The, the Bible says man judges on the outer appearance, but God judges what's on the inside of our hearts. So God sees what's going on the inside. He knows us oftentimes much better than we even know ourselves. So, so the good thing about God, okay, he understands what we are, and he knows that we can handle and if you're praying for something, one of the first things you ought to be asking yourself, if I got a goal or a dream, say, am I prepared for it? Okay, and, and, and if, if you're not, then God said, you, this is your season. This is your season of preparation. It's your time to sow the right seed to bring forth the harvest that you're looking for. And oftentimes when God delays something for us, sometimes we walk around and uh, we got uh, the old days. I don't know if the kids still poke their lips out. My boy's a little bit too old for that. Hopefully they are. Okay, but, but when I was a kid, we walk around with our lips poked out when we got a little angry and upset about something. And sometimes we can be that way in the spirit with God, okay? But you need to recognize that God loves you more than anybody else ever will love you. And if he's withholding something, that thing must be something that's going to bring detriment to your, to your life. 
He, he say he, he, he maketh rich. He gives the, the, the promise or he adds to your life or he allows you to reach your goal without adding a whole lot of sorrow to it. So God is trying to preserve us and protect us from heartache and heart pain and, and challenges and, and depression and anxiety. But he said, I'm not giving you things that you're not prepared for. And that's the benefit of a good father. Now, there's a series when I was a kid. It was Father Knows Best. Okay? Look at your name and say, Father Knows Best. Father Knows Best. Okay? So he knows what's best for all of us. So we need to trust God in the process. If we're praying for something and asking for something, we just say, God, you know what's best for my life. If you hadn't given it to me yet, I need to understand that perhaps it's not good for me or I'm not ready for it, but it's coming on down the line. Amen? Now, now, you need to know that this then is your season of preparation. And as I begin to just prepare for this message, I begin to think about where we are as a church. So we all got our individual seasons of preparation. But I say as a church, we, this is our season of preparation as well. Okay, God is adding to us constantly. And then I see new faces every week, and I get a card, new visitors, and new members joining, and, and God is adding to us. And I believe God's just going to continue to add and elevate us and grow us, but he's preparing us now for something that he has far greater for us down the line. Okay? And, and it's not just uh, Pastor Eric and myself, our wives, and the steering committee. No, he's, this, is, this is for the, the body of this church to start preparing us for what God has for us in the future. Amen? Amen? We say it often, this is not my church. This is not Pastor Eric's church. This is the church of the living God. And, and you are God's husbandmen, God's children, God's laborers. And God has a work for all of us to do as we are preparing this church for that work. Amen? Amen. Now, when I say uh, prepare, uh, preparation, what do I mean? It means to make something or someone ready for something that will happen in the future. Okay, preparation means to make, to make or get something or someone ready for something that will happen in the future. And the key to this definition is getting ready for something that's going to happen in the future. So, so as you're preparing for a goal, a vision in your life, something that you want to see yourself accomplish, both naturally and spiritually, you got to look to the end of where you're trying to go. And you need to ask yourself, okay, God, what is it going to take for me to get there? And we all understand that naturally. And if I'm taking a trip from here to, let's say, California, where well, we going to first, we're going to get our map out and we're going to say, okay, I'm trying to go to California. That's going to be the first thing. You're not just going to get in your car and start driving. You're going to try to figure out, God, where am I going and what is it going to take for me to get there? And if you're smart, especially given today's environment, you're going to start asking, how much gas is this going to cost me? I start thinking about the cost I got to pay to get me there. Do, do I have sufficient enough to get me all the way to the end? So, so you start thinking about the end, and I tell you in your own natural journeys or uh, where you're trying to go naturally and spiritually, you got to look to the end and you say, what do I have? Do I have what's on the inside of me to start preparing me for that? Now, unfortunately, for a lot of us, rather than uh, thinking about what's coming down the line, we just wait until it get there. Okay, I'm planning to take a trip to California. I'm leaving on Friday. I don't even think about the trip until Friday morning. I get up and say, God, I got to start packing my clothes. And, and I'm rushing now at the last minute trying to get it done. And we often find ourselves more reactive than we are proactive. And God is telling us, hopefully I'm speaking to somebody out there today. God is telling us that it's time out for being reactive. It's time for us to be proactive. That means we're thinking into the future of where we're trying to go well before that moment gets there. And we're starting early to prepare ourselves for it. I'll just give you a quick example. I was just, just came to me now, and it's a good one. I hope my wife gives me just a little bit of liberty to share it. Uh, but my wife had a tendency of just waiting to the last minute to pack on every trip we went on. And I'm saying, man, the flight's going to leave tomorrow. She's up 2, 3 o'clock in the, in the morning trying to pack for the flight that's going to leave at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Get in the bed, laid eyes. I say, why you keep doing this to yourself? Okay, all right, God is telling us sometimes we do that in our natural endeavors, but also in the spiritual things that he has for us. And he's telling us his time out for being reactive. It's time to be proactive, and proactive is saying, where are we trying to go? And, and do we have the things already lined up to get us there? That's in every aspect of your life. And, and I say especially for those that are desiring to get married. Okay, God would have given me a wife 
before I met my wife, I'd have made a mess of that. I wasn't ready for it yet. I hadn't even thought about what it takes to be a husband. I was 29 years old when I got married. And my wife said, well, what took you so long? She probably asked him, what took you so long to pop the question? Well, I, I need to make sure I was ready for this thing. Okay, I would make sure I was prepared. But we dated for four years. And the four years, I had to do a whole lot of soul searching. Son, are you ready for this? You know, and I had to prepare myself for it. I had to understand what God required and expected. Well, God wants us that way with everything. And there are some people who uh, the night before an exam, you just decide I'm a cram. You ain't studied all semester long. And all of a sudden, the night before the exam, and I just want to share this with you. You maybe had some kids in your class when you were growing up. You some natural examples. And they were just straight-A students, and you just come, they just smart. No, they're not. They're preparing just like everybody else, okay? When, when you playing Nintendo and you out drinking and hanging out, they're at home with their books open and they're studying. They're not just smarter than you. No, they are preparing for the test that they know is going to come. Now, now, God sometimes winks at our ignorance. Sometimes I've been there before myself. I'll, I'll just share a quick example. When I was in law school, the first semester of law school, I was scared to death. And I just, I studied all the time, man. I didn't, I didn't do much part, and I went out every on Friday nights, but in the middle of the week, man, I was in the library every day, and I was, I was getting after it. And I finished that first semester, I think I was number seven or number eight in my class. Okay, so I was, I was getting at it, man. I was nervous and scared. And then I said, oh, this is pretty easy. It's not that challenging. And the next semester, I took the first semester off. I was kind of hanging out, and then I get to the end of the semester, I didn't know a thing. And I'm cramming the night before, and I'm telling, I'm, I'm stopping this prayer group, this, this, uh, this, this study group, uh, you know, every 15, 20 minutes saying, let's hold hands and let's pray a little bit. Because <laughs> I knew I wasn't prepared. Now, God will wink at that every now and then. But he doesn't want us to live in a state of unpreparedness when we know the test is coming just around the corner. He's telling us we got to prepare ourselves for it, okay? Got to prepare ourselves for it. Now, if you find yourself in a jam, it's okay to call on the master. It's okay to pray. Okay, them folks were tired of me saying, let's pray. They didn't know what was going on on the inside of me, but I say, man, I'm not going to pass this test unless God is on my side. Okay, he's all right with that every now and then, but he does not want us to live in that space, okay? He wants us to be thoughtful of where he's trying to go. I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, we have uh, I, uh, Isaiah Spiller, uh, brother Fred, and sister Aisha's son. He's playing professional football. And uh, he didn't just wake up one day saying he wanted to be a professional football player. He has been preparing himself for that for a long time. And I say he has. His daddy had been preparing him that for a long period of time. Okay, I should see him on videos when he was in high school. And he'd be out in the middle of the summer when the other kids are hanging out. And, and I'm sure he enjoyed himself. But when the other kids are hanging out, he's running hills and doing drills and, and, and out with, with his trainers trying to get better. He prepared himself for that. So he had the skill. And when the skill meets uh, uh, preparation it's going, and meets opportunity, it equals success. Okay? Skill plus Preparation plus opportunity meets success, and you need all of them together. Amen? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. But you can find yourself, if you're not careful, with the wasted talent, okay, wasted thing that God has given you, not because you're not capable of doing better. You just refuse to prepare yourself, okay, refuse to prepare yourself. But our God is a God of order. He is a God of order, and that's how he expects his children to respond, be, be children of order. So if we go to Proverbs chapter 6, it's a book of wisdom. It's going to give us a little wisdom here on how we ought to structure our lives. And this, this tells you God's heart. Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 6, it says, go and consider this ant. Say, you, you lazy one of the sluggard. Say, consider its ways and be what? Be what? Now, now, we all say we want wisdom. We want to be wise. He say, I'm going to show you a little wisdom right now. He says, uh, it has no commander. It don't, it don't have somebody bossing around telling it what to do all the time. Okay? No overseer, no ruler. Yet, it prepares. It stores its provision in the summer so that it may have a harvest when the appointed or the needed time. Okay? It, it stores its provisions in the summer and it gathers its food at harvest. So he's telling us to go and be like this, this ant. The ant is thinking that I know winter is coming for me at some point in time. Okay? And if I'm not prepared, I'm going to starve to death. And that ant says, you know what? 
in my season of preparation, I'm going to take advantage of it, such that the harvest is going to come a little bit later. Okay, that's wisdom. That's wisdom. That's wisdom that comes from God. And we see God applying the same wisdom. Okay, we see it with Noah. Noah, he told Noah to build this ark, and he told Noah to start building this ark. He prepared Noah and, and the people there for the flood that was going to come. Get, and, and the good thing about God, he gives us clear instructions on how to prepare ourselves as well. Okay, he, he, he told uh, 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 Moses how to build this tabernacle in the wilderness. Okay, the tabernacle before they had a temple, God gave him a big old tent to be able to go and worship and sacrifice to God in it. And he told him how he wanted to do it. And he, and he told him the colors and the types of material that he wanted to use. Told him what type of poles to put up and how to put it up and take it down. Now, he was preparing something for the people. And, and, and when Solomon got ready to build the temple, the same thing. Gave him clear instructions about what he wanted in the temple, how he wanted it. Now, now the thing about God is God wasn't going to move for these folk until they had prepared the way he told them to prepare. Not the way they felt like preparing. He told them the way, and until they got it all right, he wasn't going to move. He could move to do what he desired to do in their lives until they had built the thing according to his specifications. They had properly prepared themselves. And I say before God uses us or gives us the things or the desires on our heart, as I said earlier, he's not going to put more on us than we can handle. He's not going to move in our lives until we have shown up and prepared for the things that he wants to give us. Now, now, we can understand this with this boat with Moses. We clearly understand that. He, Moses go out, not Moses, uh, Noah. Noah goes out, and he got some holes in the boat, and the boat ain't quite right. It ain't sea ready. He's going to destroy everything around him. Folks, get in there. God ain't going to rain on, to that, on earth until that boat was properly prepared. Now, you're the boat right now that he's properly pre trying to properly prepare for the work he has for you. And he's not going to be able to move in your life until you plug up all of those holes you have in your life. Some of those holes are holes of lying and holes of deceit, holes filled with lust. He's telling you, show up those holes, and he's prepared to use you for something that's far greater than you could ever imagine. Okay, you're the boat that God wants to use to bring deliverance to those that are around you. But you got to make sure you're building the boat according to the preparation that God has already foreordained. You're the boat. God's not going to let that boat take sail to accomplish the work until you show up some of these holes. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. God's calling some of us evangelists and pastors and teachers, calling you as leaders of your homes and on your jobs. He wants to elevate you. They may bring glory to his name on his job, but you got these, these holes in the vessel. Hadn't been properly prepared. Okay, and God is saying he wants us to prepare for it today. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. It's the first time I probably read out of the English Standard Version, ESV, but I thought it was a good translation for the point I'm trying to make today. He says, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, okay, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, and ready for some good work. Ready for a few good work. You're ready for everything God has for you to do. Yeah, you're always prepared and ready to go when you show up the holes that are in the boat, preparing it according to the way God has ordained. So if you have a desire to be something great in God, you got to show up the holes. You have to prepare the vessel according to the way God has ordained, and God is then ready to use you for whatever he's calling you to do. Amen? Amen. Now, now, in order for you to accomplish any goal, you need wisdom. We talked about, the Bible talks about that ant and said, be wise. And any time that I'm in, in, in embarking on any new endeavor, deciding to do anything new, uh, I, I say to myself, I don't know what I'm doing. E even if I got a little wisdom about it, a little understanding, I say to myself, you don't know what you're doing. And if that is your mindset, it, it allows you to push that pride down. It allows you to say, I need to go ask somebody who has a little bit more experience in this area than I do. It allows you to go ask the question to get the wisdom of the things you need to be successful. So this is all part of preparation, all right? You're getting ready to get started. You don't know how to go to California. You're going to go get a map. You're going to go to Google. You're going to be asking somebody, what can I do? So this is the same way in your goals and your endeavors in life. You say, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me go and get a little wisdom to be able to help me. Amen? Amen. Now, Proverbs 24 and 6. 
And oftentimes, instead of going to ask somebody, we pretend like we know. Okay, and I've been there before, too. This is, I, I done got some wisdom over the years. Okay, I, I remember somebody asking me when I first started practicing law, guy was asking me to go and research something. Man, I didn't even know the, what the word meant that he was asking me to go research. So and rather than me saying, sir, I don't understand, can you explain that word to me? I spent, man, way too much time just trying to figure out a definition of the word that was really quite easy. So you say to yourself, I don't know, and I don't have to walk around like I got all the answers. It's okay. This is how you gain wisdom. Okay, Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 6 says, by, For by wise counsel thou shalt make war. And he says, In a multitude of counselors there is what? There is safety for you. That means you, you're less likely to make a mistake or an error if you're going to get some wisdom about what you're trying to accomplish. In a multitude of counselors, there's safety. And I tell people all the time, it doesn't cost you anything to get an answer from somebody, to ask them for a little help, a little direction. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't even have to take it. It just gives you another data point for you to consider as you try to achieve the goals or the plans you have for your life. It's a good thing. Proverbs uh, 9 and 9 says, give instructions to a wise man. That means a wise man is going to look for a better way, a more effective way uh, uh, to be prepared for the thing he's, he's pursuing. He say, give instruction to a wise man, he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. So it's saying you, there's always opportunity for you to get more. Amen? Right. Now, I remember when, uh, when, when I first, my wife first came and told me that she was pregnant with, with my oldest son. And uh, I didn't have a father figure in my life. Now, there were a whole lot of things I could have done at that point. I could have just kind of said, oh, I'll just kind of figure it out. Uh, I'm a man. I kind of know what men ought to be like. No, I would have, have created the same mess that I was before I came to God if I would have done that. And what I did, I went out and found men who had young boys who had raised them to be godly men, uh, men and, and I said children, godly men and women, and I went and started asking them questions. Start asking them, hey, well, how do I handle this? What do I do? When we got ready to start this, this church here, Pastor Eric and I, when we got ready to start this church, I knew I didn't, I didn't know what it was like to run a whole church. I went and started asking some pastors. I started setting up time. Hey, do you mind talking to me uh, once a month? And I call him and talk to him about some of the things that we may have been dealing with, some of the things that were on my mind. Why? I don't want to make a mistake. That there's safety in a multitude of counselors. Okay, so let the pride down, and I say men, but women sometimes have just as much pride as the men. You got to say within yourself, I don't know what I'm doing. That allows you to do two things. One, it asks somebody, and the second thing, it causes you to go and pray and ask Almighty God. I'm without sufficiency of myself to be able to get it done. Okay, so if you're trying to get a new job, just had children, about to have children, you want to get married. Or you've been married before and you recognize that thing didn't work out the first time. <laughs> let, let me see what I did wrong the next time. You want to be a supervisor on your job, go and ask somebody. Say, you know what, I don't have what it takes to be successful at this. Let me go find somebody who has a little bit more wisdom than I do. Now, when I was uh, in, uh, uh, many years ago, I had a, a, a mentor of mine. And he would often say he was a guy from kind of Germany, Austrian area. And he'd always say that if you... If you're planning out something, uh, you need to go and, and, and think, 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 then do, do, do. Think, 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 and do, do, do. Meaning most people get a task, you just start running out, and you're trying to figure it out as you go. You ever heard the old expression, we're trying to uh, build a bicycle while we ride it? Okay. All right, this is what a lot of us do. We try to build the bicycle as we're riding it at the same time. I'm just going to put it together as I go. But no, you need to think, 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 do, do, do. I don't know about some of these men. You're trying to put the bicycle together for your kids. And, and I've been dealing with some brothers around here. They don't read the instructions. They, they just look at the parts and just start putting it all together. No, you need to take your time, man. Read those instructions. Think, think, think before you do, do, do. And if you're doing that, you are more likely to be successful. Now, he's given me this as a purely natural example. But I tell you, as Christians, we got a higher source that is far greater than any wisdom any man could ever have. And we ought to pray, 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 then think, think, think before we do, do, do. Okay? We need to spend more time praying and prayer preparing before we start embarking and engaging upon the thing that we're trying to accomplish. James 1 and 5 says in NIV, if any of you lacks wisdom... You should ask of God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. And he said, it shall be given to you. So if you lack wisdom, and, and again, you do. You're starting a new task. You don't know what you're doing. You lack wisdom. He's saying what you ought to do is you have to go and lay before God 
and then trust God that he's going to give you the wisdom that you're looking for. And I can tell you this, I've seen that uh, uh, manifest even in my own life. Anytime I natural endeavors, I go pray, God, what should I do? And sometimes God gives me the answer. Sometimes God directs me to somebody that's working on my job who maybe has the answer that I'm looking for. And we as a church body, that's me individually. But I believe God has, is calling this church body to something far greater than where we are right now. And I think as a body, individually, we need to pray uh, alone, but we also ought to be coming together as a church family. We ought to be uh, praying in corporate prayer petitioning God for the things that he wants to do with us collectively. So, so as a church body, we got to be play, laying before God even more. On Friday nights, we're here at this church, and the church is going to be open on Friday nights. And, and notwithstanding the gas, for those that can, we'd encourage you to come on out. We're going to be laying before the God, before God, before the Lord. We're going to be praying and, and, and crying out to God. And then we're going to get up and we're going to have an opportunity to connect and fellowship with one another. The Bible says, know them that do what? That labor among you. And the way you're going to get to do that, you're going to have to be able to talk to them and fellowship with them. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start laying before the Lord a little bit more. We're asking him for the wisdom, not only individually, but collectively for the thing that he wants us to do here as a church family and a church body. Amen. Amen. Now, now, as you get the wisdom from God and you're preparing yourself, you need to always know that there's always more with God. The Bible talks about how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways of past finding out. Meaning, meaning you never get the fullness of who God is. If you can live to be a million years on this earth, there's always going to be more wisdom, more understanding, more knowledge that we can get from God that we can still tap into. So what does that mean? That means I don't care where I am in my walk with God. I don't care where I am with, with the vision that I'm, I'm pursuing in God. I don't care if I feel like I've already arrived. There is always more more that God can give me to make me more effective in the thing that he's calling me to do. That means I need to always be going back to the well that never runs dry, asking him for more of his wisdom that he can impart in me. Amen. 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 So we never get enough what God has for us. So we got to always go and lay before him. Okay. And as we're doing it, oftentimes we got a desire and a plan that we're trying to bring to pass and it may not come when you desire, okay? There's, a, there's that old song we sing, may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time, okay? God is always a, 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 a moving on his time and not always ours. So as you are pursuing a vision or, or preparing for this goal, keep preparing. In the appointed time, God's going to bring to pass the thing that he is desiring for us to have, Amen. So he doesn't want us to be weary in doing what is right. He wants us to stay on the path until he brings to pass the thing that we have petitioned and prayed him for. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 35. He says, cast not away therefore your confidence. Some of you are waiting for God to do something for you. You've been praying for a while and it ain't happened. Well, what did I say? Uh, Noah built that ark. He was building that ark for, for what, in 70 years, 80 years? He built this ark for a long period of time. But it was coming. Okay, the appointed time was coming. Verse 35 says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, prepared yourself, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now, the just shall live by that, that God is going to be true to his word, okay? Going to live by faith. But if any man draw back, he says, my soul have no pleasure in him. For we are not those that draw back to perdition, i.e., those that give up. And in the spiritual context, we don't turn, turn around going back to the things God is trying to pull us away from. He said, we are not of those that draw back unto perdition, but we are of those that believe to the saving of our souls. So God is going to come without delay. And the delay does not always mean denial. Continue to prepare yourself. You just say the cake is not done at this moment. Cake is still in the oven. It's still baking. Has a little bit more time to go. But I just need to leave it right there where it is and trust that God's going to bring it to pass at the appointed time. I remember uh, many years ago when, uh, when I, uh, about, this about 2006, I had moved up in the company, became a manager over a team. And I wanted to move up to the next level. You know, I got a manager. I put on my, my thing. I want to move up to the next level. So, so I put on my uh, 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 
a performance document, these two big jobs I wanted. And I wanted these two jobs. I was thinking, man, I maybe get these jobs next couple of years. I'd be ready and set and ready to go. And I put them on there, and everything I would do was in preparation, or my job was in preparation of those two jobs. I, I'd look for opportunities and say, well, I want this job, but I need this sort of experience. So I start going out looking for those experiences. And I was expecting after about year three or four, man, I, I should be on my way moving up. And three, four, pass around, five, six, I still ain't got it. But guess what I kept doing? I kept on preparing. I kept getting the, the experiences I needed. Now, this isn't a natural example. I kept looking and kept uh, 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 looking for th these different experiences. Well, I need to do this. I maybe need to go overseas for a little while. Maybe I need to go get some experience. Maybe I need to understand this part of my job. And, and I kept pushing. So year eight, nine roll around. I still ain't got those jobs. Year 10 roll around. And both of those jobs that I've been preparing for came open at the same time. And guess what? I got both jobs at the exact same time. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. But I was only able to get the jobs because I had prepared myself, not for one, but for both of them. Okay, prepared myself for them. And what God is telling you today, sometimes it may not come in, the, in, in your appointed time, but you need to know that in the appointed time of God, the door opens up, the Red Sea begins to part in your life, and God gives you the thing that you're looking for. All you got to do is hold on in the process and continue to take advantage of your season of preparation. Habakkuk, uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse number 2. He says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. It says, make it plain upon the tables that he that run, that, that, uh, that, may, that he may run that readeth it. Verse number 3 said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Say an appointed time. Appointed time. Now, now this is this Kairos time that Wayne ministered about a few weeks ago. Okay, it is the appointed time for God for something to come to pass. And our time is not God's time, but we need to know as we are preparing ourselves, he will withhold no good thing from them that walketh upright. He, he says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So if you're delighting yourself in the Lord and you have a desire to be married, have a husband or a wife, keep delighting yourself in the Lord. Prepare yourself for the spouse that you believe God's going to bring you in the future. And at the appointed time, it's going to come to pass. All right, but at the end, he says, it's going to speak and not lie. Though it tarry, he says, wait for it because it will definitely, it will surely, it will certainly come to pass. It will not tarry, meaning it's not going to take forever. We got this reading lab that we started here, and, and, and Pastor Eric talked about it this morning. And, and we put this reading lab down uh, on our vision statement for our church probably three, four years ago. It was almost right up soon after we started the church, and it's been sitting out there. And we've just been kind of preparing. We done had some computers out here, and we've been preparing, thinking it's going to come the second week. We, I remember we got the first set of computers. We said, oh, this must be it. It's going to come next week or next month. And it's been about two years since we first got that first set of computers. But it came at the appointed time. Amen. We, we needed to add a few more pieces to the puzzle. And, and God began to bring a, 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 a brother, John Allen, to Deborah, and they came and took this. We just needed to wait for God's timing, and he brings it to pass. So what you ought to do as you're waiting, just know, don't give up hope. You feel like God's put the vision on your heart. I just need to make sure God, I just need to prepare myself and, and not let anybody take me off the course by what they're going to say. I'm going to believe that God's going to bring it to pass. Remember when old, uh, uh, Nehemiah was getting ready to build this, this wall, okay? They, they had some sand ballots out there. As he was building this wall, he had a vision to bring it, and it was taking a little bit long time, and old sand ballot was coming and say, they ain't going to ever get this wall built. But God began to tell him, no, but God said it, he's going to bring it to pass, okay? And he didn't let the sand ballots take him off the plan of God. And I tell you, they got some little sand ballots in your life telling you what God's not going to do for you. No, delight yourself in the Lord, okay, and let God bring the thing to pass at the appointed time. I'm just going to trust in him and not allow somebody to take me off course. And I tell you this, that the plan of God can never be defeated. So if God has a plan in your life, you have hope that that plan's going to come to pass. If God's put it there at the appointed time, you need to know it's coming. Okay, don't, don't let anybody take you off the course. Amen? Amen. And I'll just say this, where we are with this reading lab, okay, I, I believe it's just the start. 
And, and sometimes in the process of what God is doing for you, he may take you through a few pilot programs. Okay, the pilot programs are still designed to prepare you. He's preparing you for something that is far greater. Okay, and we can see this in the life of Joseph. Joseph was a, a, a righteous man. But, but Joseph found himself in, the, in, the, in a few pilot programs, right? He went, from the, he went from the pit to Potiphar's house. He thought he was doing pretty good. And he went from Potiphar's house to the dungeon. Oh, my goodness, I found myself back in jail. And he came out of the dungeon and began to be second in command of all of Egypt. Now, God's plan for him was always to bring him to the end. But he needed to take him through a few experiences along the way. So what I call some on-the-job training, some things we can learn by reading in a book. But some things that we're going to learn, we're going to only learn by experience. And sometimes God takes us through our pilot programs that we may learn some insights that's going to make us more effective in the ultimate call that God has for our lives. So it's the pilot programs that we're going through that God has taken us through sometimes to give us the experiences, the insights we need that's going to uh, uh, be necessary for the place he's ultimately taken us to. Uh, 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 Joseph needed the insights he got in Potiphar's house. He needed the insights that he got in, in, in the prison, in the dungeon, because God was taking him to something that was going to be far greater than where he was. And, and I'll tell you this as a church body, okay, God's taking us somewhere. And where we are right now, this is just a pilot program. These are just training grounds that we're on. Okay, this training ground. We, we started out in a hotel. That, that was a pilot for us. And God said, okay, they managed that all right. Let me move them on over here to this little building over here, 10,000 square feet of space. And we got in here and managed this the same way. And God is saying, okay, they look like they're doing pretty good. They're learning some things here. Now he's taking us to a bigger edifice with more land, and we take all these learnings from these pilot programs. These were experiences that God put us in for the sake of preparing us for where he has us to go. So we have to, as a family, as a body of believers, everybody here, say, this is just a pilot program. And I'd ask you, in this pilot program, are you learning what you need to learn for the thing that God has taken us to in the future? Are you doing your part to learn what you need to learn right here in this pilot program? Okay. The, the Bible talks about how uh, God is the God of all mercy. He said, who comforted us in any tribulation that we go through, that when God has comforted us, we're able then to take those same experiences and comfort others with the comfort that we ourselves have received of God. So sometimes even the experiences that we go through uh, spiritually and naturally are not just for our sake. It is for them to be able to tell somebody else, God brought me out of this. He's going to do the same for you. I can give you comfort and give you some, some, some firm belief that as you're going through your valley experiences, this is just a time of preparation for you. Amen? Amen. Now, most people, if you don't understand that, okay, in your pilot program, and times you're going through some of your challenging times, you, you will, you'll throw in the towel. But if you find yourself in the valley today, you know, you live in righteous. The Bible says the, right, the steps of a righteous man are always ordered by the Lord. So if you find yourself in the valley, the Bible says, in all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So right now I may be feeling like I'm in a dungeon or a valley, but all God is doing is preparing me for something far greater than where I am right now. Come on and praise him with me this morning. And some of the things that we need to learn, we will only learn in the valley. The, the valley experiences are necessary. They're, they're part of our preparation as well. I, I remember when I first started practice law, I'm giving you just a little bit of my own natural experiences. They had me stuck in a library all the time. I was stuck in there writing memos, and I'm like, man, I want to talk to some clients. I want to get out of this library reading these books. I want to go out and, and have dinners with some clients and, and, and smooth some clients myself. I want to enjoy myself a little bit. But that was my training ground. It's preparing me. And ultimately, when God took me to a place, where I became manager over a, a team of people, I didn't have time to go study the law. But the time I spent in that library, I felt like a dungeon at times. I was there sometimes 6, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. My wife would tell you, I done spent the, the night at the office. She had to bring me clothes the next day, okay, preparing myself for what God ultimately had to take me. And if I didn't prepare myself, didn't take advantage of that valley experience I felt like I was in, I wasn't going to be prepared for the bigger thing God had for me later. So sometimes the experiences that God takes us through, sometimes it doesn't feel good for us at the moment, okay? But you need to know that is part of your preparation. Amen? Amen. Now, now, as I begin to just think about this message, I get ready to close here today. 
I mean, riding down the street, and I, I, I don't think I've ever used one of these things, and that tells you how God sometimes deals with us. But some of the experiences that we take through, some of the, the things we need to prepare us for the next level, it can only be done by hardship and challenge. Sometimes it got to make us a little uncomfortable. But I say most of the time with God is doing something, it's always going to be stretching you out of your comfort zone, making you a little bit uncomfortable. Think about some of the people who prayed on prayer lines here. God's going to make you great, mighty prayer warriors. But the first time you pray, you're like, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this. It makes you a little bit uncomfortable. You got to sometimes allow God to stretch you and, and, and break you and, and take you through some challenging times. But that's all is part of the preparation. But oftentimes when you're being shaken and taken out of sorts, you want to get out of the fire. That's all you're thinking about. But if I can change your mentality and say, God is just molding me and making me at this moment. I already have what's on the inside to be effective for God. I just have to take advantage of this season of preparation that I'm in, even though perhaps it don't feel good. So I, I got this thing, and I, many of you may know what this is. Okay, this is a glow stick. Have y'all ever seen this thing? All right, raise your hand if you've seen it. We'll get a little participation here. Okay, well, most of y'all are pretty good. Okay, now, now it, this thing right here is capable of what it needs to do. Say it's capable of what it needs to do, but it's not prepared to do it yet, okay? It has what's necessary on the inside, but, but it's not yet prepared for what it needs to do, okay? Now, now for some of us, what's, what you need, you, you got on the inside of you, you just ain't been prepared yet, and, and sometimes it's the, the shaking process that prepares you for what God's trying to take you. Okay, so this thing has nothing special about it. And I guess they got a couple of up here just in case one of them don't work quite the way I want it to. All right. But, but here it is here. There ain't nothing wrong with it. It's, it has what it needs. But this thing's supposed to be glowing. Okay, that's why they call it a glow stick. But in order for this thing to, 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 to take what it's capable of doing and, and get it to do what it is, uh, ultimately make it effective at it, what it's going to do, it requires preparation. And, and the preparation of this thing requires you to break it. it. Requires you to break it. And it requires you to shake it up a little bit. All right? Now, I, I didn't change it at all. All I did was prepare it for what was already on the inside of it. And what I want to tell you today, all right, God is breaking some of you. He's shaking some of you up. And he's doing it for the purpose that you may bring forth glory in your lives. So allow God to break you. Allow God to shake you up a little bit because what's on the inside of you is going to bring forth the glory that God has in your life if you go through the breaking and the shaking process. Nothing special about it. It was capable. It just wasn't prepared. And for some of us, for the call that God has called us to, okay, we're capable. We just need to be prepared. So I want to charge you today. Let God break you a little bit. Don't move yourself out of the way. He's not designed to kill you. He's not designed to take you out. You're just part of the preparation process. It's just part of my season of preparation this morning. He, he just, he going he to break me a little bit. And the Bible says that a bruised reed, he said he's not going to break all the way off. He says smoking flax, he's not going to quench it till he brings forth victory to judgment. He's going he's gonna to bring it all the way to the end. Just you stay right there. And you're going to be surprised. What God is able to do in your life when you allow the master to make and mold you the way that he wants to. Come on, praise God with me this morning. God is good. God is good. God is good. Just read one past scripture here that I think brings it all home here. First Peter chapter 1. Chapter, chapter 1, verse number 6. He says, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith was already on the inside of you, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire. He says, that thing may result in praise, glory, and honor, even Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ is revealed. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. It's already on the inside of you. He's just going to prepare you and bring it out. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet as we get ready to close this morning.
Now, we talked about all these things we need to do to prepare. We talked about all of them. We talked about naturally and spiritually, and hopefully God giving some wisdom out today on things you ought to be thinking about as you're looking to prepare yourself for the thing that you feel like God's calling you to do both naturally and spiritually. But ultimately, our ultimate goal is preparing ourselves here on earth is preparing ourselves for a greater reward in heaven, okay? And we need to make sure the Bible says that we're always ready for that call. And so that's the preparation. This is, this is a pilot program of sorts down here. God is preparing us. He's refining us to become children of the Most High that we may live with Him forever. And there's a passage of Scripture. I won't go to it today, but I'll just paraphrase it. It talks about those ten virgins. And those ten virgins had all, all sitting there waiting for a time they know is going to come. The bridegroom at some point is going to come. And the bridegroom shows up in the middle of the night. And somebody says, the bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom's on his way. And it says five of those virgins were wise. Because why? They had prepared themselves. And they had five of them that were foolish. They found themselves unprepared at the end. And God is using that as an example for all of us. That while we are down here on earth, we don't want to ever lose track of the fact that we are preparing ourselves for a greater reward for us in glory. This is not our home. He's preparing us for a home on high where he has many mansions. Amen. So for those today that you say, you know what, I've heard the message on today. Recognize there's some natural things I need to be prepared for. I know what I need to do. Some of you say, you know what, I, I need to prepare myself for that ultimate place that God has for us, the ultimate promise. And we want to give you an opportunity to come down today. Surrender your life and your heart to Jesus. Ask him to, to come into your heart, into your